Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Gaysford and hopefully you guys all had a great Christmas and New Year. Um, I did take a little bit of break to spend some time with my lovely fiance and just um, just kind of take things easy. It was felt like a pretty busy time of the year even though not a whole lot's going on, especially right now. But um, I did just want to take some time to refresh, kind of play with um, how the space looked and how I made videos and try to just kind of refine my technique a little bit. So I hopefully you guys understand that. Um, definitely let me know in the comments down below if things seem better, if things just look crisper or nicer or out of focus. Maybe things just look awful. Maybe things just sound awful. I don't really care what's going on. Just let me know what your thoughts are down below. Um, it would really help me out as a content creator and um, just help me make better videos for you guys, hopefully. been a minute since I've hopped into Home Assistant, but um, there's so much more we're going to be doing in Home Assistant that I really don't want to slow down at all. Um, but I also don't want to spend a whole bunch of time talking about a bunch of like specific concepts inside of Home Assistant further down the road. And every time I need to use one, I'll have to re-show you guys how to do it. So I just wanted a quick video on how to use secrets in Home Assistant. It's something that um, I believe will come up a few more times throughout our Home Assistant journey. I do think it's something that everybody should know how to do inside of Home Assistant. So that's what we're going to be looking at in today's video. Alright, so let's go ahead and hop over into Home Assistant. You can go ahead and see we're in the file editor. Um, if you don't remember in a previous video, I did mention I would be using the file editor instead of the VS Code add-in. Um, after playing with the VS Code editor a little bit, I decided that there wasn't a, uh, as much of a bang using it as I thought. Um, it just seems a little bit more resource intensive to use, um, especially when you're running on Raspberry Pi, especially an older Raspberry Pi, I do think this file editor plugin um, is just a lot more convenient. But like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about our secrets.yaml file in today's video. And the reason the secret.yaml file is so great is if we hop over to our main configuration.yaml file, which is this guy right here, you can see we have a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, and you can actually see down here, it's calling into a few different files. And you can see just, this is just a very plain text file. And I mean, all these files are, but um, just an extra layer of security. Security through obscurity is kind of like just a standard security term when there's nothing better to do for your security. Um, and Home Assistant configuration is kind of the same way. Um, and as you can see here, I've actually used it in the past when I set up our Z-Wave integration. Um, I do have the network key here where I have to find the secret. And to do that, I do an exclamation point secret Z-Wave network key. And I don't even think this is what we ended up used, using in the video, if I remember right. We're actually using the configuration integration. Yeah, I believe we're using this Z-Wave integration here. So that might be kind of moot at this point, but um, we're gonna go ahead and just leave it in there because everything seems to be working on my end of things and I don't really want to break it right this second. Um, but yeah, this whole idea of this dollar sign secret Z-Wave network key. And so if we hop back over to our secrets.yaml, we could actually see they actually gave us one in here. And they said, use this file to store secrets like usernames and passwords. So they have some password welcome. And so we could actually call some password welcome. Um, if we go back over to our configuration file, or if we're in any of these .yaml files, really, they all link together as long as you're using the prefixes defined like you should be. Um, I can't find my configuration. Okay. So if we came in here and we could actually use that some password by going dollar sign secret and then just the name of it. So some password and just like that. And it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but if you're not going through your home assistant, um, doing this as you're adding things, you're, it's definitely a good idea to be moving your stuff over. Like, 
Let's see. That's something that wouldn't be crazy. All right. So our Z-Wave USB path here. Like, this is not something I'm scared to show or anything like that. But let's say I wanted to kind of just hide it from this file. So that way prying eyes didn't see it. Um, I could actually come here, I could do the control C to copy. We could hop over to our secrets. Uh, let's go ahead and close out of this file without saving. Uh, we'll hop over to our secrets.yaml file. And then what we can do is we can add a Z wave path right here. And we can just paste. Oh, we can just paste. There we go. Um, all right, that USB path there. And then all we would have to do is take this variable name here and we'll go ahead and save our file and we'll go back over to our configuration.yaml and we could actually just swap this guy out here with the dollar sign secret Z-Wave path and go ahead and press save. And just like that, we started using secrets to obscure, obscure, obscure. And just like that, we're using the secrets.yaml file to kind of obfuscate some of the username and passwords that we did at once have in our configuration file. It's just kind of the best practice with Home Assistant. Um, and knowing my background with Linux and security, I definitely think people should do the recommended guidelines for following security practices and this is a pretty easy way to do so and i think i'm gonna go ahead and end the video here guys um i know it's a pretty simple concept and it's a pretty quick thing to grasp and get and understand it's just something that i didn't know when i first started using home assistant and hopefully with some of the configurations we start doing here soon or we're going to be spending some time and get the side the configuration.yaml file Hopefully we'll be using them more. I think that'd be super exciting. That's how I prefer to set up my home assistant. Um, everything else seems to have migrated over to his integration, which is super easy way to do things. But um, there's a lot of add-ons that from third parties and just people out there like you that code add-ons and plugins and features for home assistant. And a lot of that does happen through the configuration files. So getting used to editing them and modifying them is definitely a good thing to be aware of on how to do. Um, but if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, especially if you found it useful. Again, I'm trying some new stuff out here with my video setup. So definitely let me know down below on how the video turned out. Um, and if you like home automation, definitely stick around to the channel. Here soon I'll be making a Shelly video or two on how to set up some Shelly devices inside your home. Um, I've been messing around with the wiring in my house a little bit. Um, I couldn't find my multimeter until recently. So hopefully I get some of these installed soon and I can start making a video on it. I think that's going to be all for now. Um, obviously guys, thanks so much for watching the video and sticking around and subscribing to the channel. I really do appreciate it. I think the last time I checked, I had over 200 subscribers, which still just blows my mind. Um, I really do appreciate it. Thank you for giving me your time.